And so um, the following Wednesday nights, we'll be using Holden Evening Prayer for uh, our the music of uh, the midweek service, and then focusing on a word um, that helps us live into that forgiveness, mercy, love, and the like. Um, and then on Sunday mornings, we'll continue the Love Made Known theme as we continue reading uh, the story of God's people, the chronological reading. And so next Sunday, we'll hear about Queen Esther, and then we move into uh, Jesus' birth and the stories of Jesus' ministry. So we encourage you to take part in uh, Sunday morning experiences, Wednesday evening experiences um, during as part of your Lenten practice. There also is a bunch of fellowship and um, administrative uh, meetings that are coming up. Uh, one of the fellowship pieces um, is a mitten and card group, a card making, not card playing group that uh, Lisa Brown and Carol Kirkhoff are starting. Will you guys wave just so everybody talk to Lisa and Carol if you're interested in uh, being part of that group. And then uh, we're the, I can't believe that first, that Lent is this week. Second, that I'm going to uh, invite you to think about the garage sale and the summer fest um, and Bible camp. Uh, but in order to have those events go, uh, go well, we need our planning teams to get together. And so you'll see um, information about uh, Bible camp, inf an informational meeting that's going to be Sunday, February 25th. So if you have kids first grade through 12th grade, um, we have a tradition of going to Luther Point uh, Bible Camp in Grantsburg, and so invite you to be at that meeting. And then a, gar a garage sale planning meeting on uh, Wednesday, March 6th, and summer fest planning on uh, Wednesday, February 28th. So um, mark your calendars for those things. And then our annual chili, um, chili and mac and cheese cook-off. Um, is coming March 3rd, and attached to that will be a silent auction and a cornhole, an indoor cornhole tournament. Um, and so if you're interested in participating, especially if you are interested in um, donating a silent auction item, if you can be thinking about what those might be, um, those are things, um, and there is information in uh, out and about on the e-blast and in the bulletin about things. Last announcement, maybe the most important, um, there is a birthday in our midst today. A few weeks ago it was one of our oldest members, now it's one of our youngest members. So Easton, would you come up here? It's Easton's sixth birthday today, and so we should sing happy birthday. So come stand up here with me so everybody can see you. <laughs> All right, let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Easton. Happy birthday to you. And many more. And many more. With that being said, let us stand as we continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our refuge, our rock and refuge. We pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew our creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. 
By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. As we sing our gathering song, we invite the children of the church to gather our quarters for our quarter.
or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. Please read Luke chapter 12, starting with verse 4, responsibly with me. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you who to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has a story to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all gone. Do not be afraid. You are more valuable than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man, also will acknowledge before the angels of God. they trust that God is going to 
help them make the right decision. Just like God helps us make the decisions too. Can we go back now? Yes, you can go back. Thank you for coming. Welcome back. Oh. Nothing like having a timekeeper. Come on, Pastor Ann. Keep us going. The second lesson for us to focus on today comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Uh, now, this is King Nebuchadnezzar speaking. Now, if you are ready when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. And who, it, and who is the God? Who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present an offense to you in this matter. If, if our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O oh king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O oh king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their garments. And they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was there not three men we, bought, we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, but I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the, the satraps and the prefects and the governors and the king's counselors gathered together, saw that the fire had, had, no, had, had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads were, were not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's commands and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own. Here ends the reading. Will you bow your, hair, your heads in prayer with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, O Lord, be acceptable to you. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. <coughs> there are many people that I know, and, and you probably know some as well, um, that have certain that have to be really cautious of uh, the foods that they eat. Um, they're they're cautious because maybe what they eat they're allergic to, or they have a food sensitivity. They have some foods that trigger horrible symptoms, some horribly embarrassing symptoms when it comes to their bodies interacting with certain things. A member of our family uh, gauges her food intake often saying, saying these words, well, you know, if I eat that, that will ruin me. That will ruin me. But she's very quick to then also go, that will ruin me. A bite won't kill me. A bite won't kill me. Food sensitivities aside, we all have things that have the ability to ruin us. 
ruin our bodies, ruin our standing in the community, ruin our future potential opportunities. There are a boatload of things that can ruin us. And yet, we still remain tempted to do those things, even though we know what the outcome could most likely be. And that those things can ruin us for more than just an hour or two or a day. They can ruin our entire lives. Things that cause more than just that embarrassing bodily function or a day on the sidelines. But why is it, why is it that we continue to be tempted by things that we know are not good for us, that would deter life, that would ruin us? Why is it that we long for those things? And yet, we often are very quick to do the mental gymnastics, attempting to justify even just a bite, a morsel, a moment of that tempting thing. Saying that that one bite, that one word, that one action won't kill us, so we will go for it, even if it is detrimental. That one bite, one word can become a slippery slope that spreads easily beyond the moment that we're in. The action sets us off in all kinds of ways, it causes a reaction even if we believe it's not such a big deal or we brush it off as, oh, I'll know better next time. Because we have this hope, this weird hope that the pattern of ruin will skip over this moment, that it will be it will be just fine. It will be fine. As humans, we fall prey to these kinds of temptations in all kinds of ways, from food that can ruin our stomachs to much more sinister and damaging things. It might be why Jesus includes that line in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the Lord's Prayer, something that we pray week after week as we gather in worship. And think about, in the Ten Commandments, Gail read the first portion of that from Exodus 20 today. God puts a key emphasis on the fact that God should be first in our lives. That we should not just believe that God is the one true God, but to live into it. To have no other gods. For we have a jealous more than just in word do we say we believe in God, but it needs to be lived out in daily ways. It's here that we lean into putting God first, especially in the face of temptation, versus assimilating to who and what is around us. It's here we enter the story from Daniel today. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, along with Daniel, um, are young men of Israelite descent who have been captured and taken into exile by the Babylonians. As the Babylonians were taking the people into captivity, they saw these four young men who were uh, without physical defect. They had an aptitude for learning. They were handsome. And so they brought them into a special place a place where they would serve the king after years of learning the language, learning all the customs, learning how to operate in the palace. Three long years into captivity, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego now come into service of the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. They were fully immersed in all things Babylonian. They were immersed and assimilated into the customs and the language. And yet, they refused to follow the king's command to bow and pay homage to the statue of the king. Three long years of learning the customs of the land that they lived in. But they didn't forget their God. Their very livelihoods, and frankly their life itself, depended on following the king's commands. And so many of their fellow Israelites had already succumbed to the foreign powers in all kinds of ways, including taking on other gods. It was in their best interest to do likewise. 
to let go of that belief because who knows if the one true God would actually show up after three years of oppression and exile. But they believed. It would be a safer way to follow the crowd, to believe that this is a seemingly small action of bowing before a statue. And yet for them it felt impossible. Throughout all of humanity's history, we have been tempted to follow the crowd instead of following God's commands. We've made excuses believing that we are doing it to protect ourselves and our loved ones because who else will? We do the mental gymnastics of convincing ourselves that the actions aren't really that bad. It's just a small thing. It will only ruin me for a day. It's just a little sin that we can repent of and you know God promises to forgive so I'll just do what needs to be done after the fact. We follow the crowd because we think we'll be worse off, singled out, embarrassed, or worse maybe rejected and removed from the group from the protection from the community that we hold so dear. We just say it's okay I can be ruined for now um, because it'll pass and I'll be okay. But really, in the end, are we okay? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were faced with this temptation to follow the crowd, to keep their head down, to not rock the boat, to not stir up problems for their community already held in captivity. They were, they needed to decide who they would follow. Would they follow the commands of King Nebuchadnezzar who literally held their life in his hands? Or would they trust the one true Almighty God? And regardless of what they decided, they, it would come with consequences. It would come with demands on their life. Choose God and get thrown into the fiery furnace where God may choose to save you. There was no promise given that the actions of their community, with the actions of their community just causing them to go into exile, that God would show up for them. Or choose to worship the statue, keep their jobs, keep their livelihoods, and relinquish their faith. Choose the easy way or the right way. Be ruined for the moment that ultimately leads to death or to stand firm trusting that God will provide. As the story goes, they chose God. They chose to stand in faith, even if it meant certain death. And in the king's rage, he told them to fire up that furnace seven times hotter, killing the guards that were throwing them into the furnace. Yet they, in their faithfulness, were unsinged, untouched, in fact, dancing in the flames with God, rejoicing in the fact that God was real and present and with them in their trial. The king was utterly amazed by what he witnessed, declaring that this must be the one true God if they are able to not just survive the heat, but remain unscathed. This is the God that is all-powerful. The story is a great illustration for us about how God's power can steal our hearts when we are faced with temptations, when we're faced with distractions that attempt to pull us away from God's promises, from God's presence. And when we're caught at that intersection of doing what is easy versus what is right, choosing faith over safety, choosing to put God first instead of the distraction temptations that always come knocking, we are reminded that God does in fact show up. And that ultimately when we begin to lean towards the actions that will ruin us, that God can hold us in God's love. That God brings Christ into our lives to direct and inspire us to forego the temptation to move away from the evil and to trust in the good to walk in righteousness, to stand firm in our faith, even in the shadow of death, trusting that there is more with God.
than what you know. And as we do that, we will face many fiery furnaces. We will face many intersections where we want to turn one, the easy way versus the right way. But God calls us to be God's people, to trust that God is present, and to trust that God will provide for us. Whether it's a fiery furnace, a tough decision, a difficult day, a temptation that we want just to fight out. God promises to be with us and provide for us through the cross of Christ. May we hold that this day.
line up here facing the congregation. Uh, the following people have been elected to the living walk to uh, positions of leadership as our church council. And as I read your name, if you'll just wave so everybody knows who's who. Chris Shields as president. Sarah Greeno as vice president. Chris Anderson as secretary. Chris is on vacation, un unable to be with us. Uh, Jackie Braun as our treasurer. And then members at large, uh, Jennifer Flashberger, Lisa Brown. Rosie Olson, Steve Yar, and Trish Clifford. We give thanks for your willingness to serve in this capacity. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now with these sisters and brother who will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. You have been elected to serve in these leadership positions and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one, into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in, in this congregation, the wider church, the community, and the whole world. You are to be faithful in specific areas of serving, that the spirit who empowers you might be glorified. And you are to be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace and harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, answer, I will and I ask God to help you. I will and I ask God to help you. And people of God, they don't do this work in a vacuum. And so I ask you, will you support these elected leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. I now declare that you are installed as officers and council members of this congregation. Almighty God, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us show a sign of appreciation for these leaders. <laughs> now let us join our hearts in prayer.
We ask you to be close to Lori, Roberta, Bobby, Chris and Lana, Meg, Michael, Rhonda, Kate, Mark, Heidi, Bennett, Chris, Jackie, Griffin, and the family and friends of Don Jensen, and those we name in the quiets of our hearts at this time. Guide us to offer hospitality, shelter, friendship, and care to any in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the transforming beauty and love of God in ways that honor the dignity of all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting that all the saints, prophets, and those who die in faith are held in your care. We remember Thanksgiving those who have died and ask you to comfort all who grieve their loss, especially the family of Don Jensen. Grant us your gift of salvation as we await your coming again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another.
and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. We are reminded as we prepare our hearts to come and receive this meal that it is Jesus who invites us, who draws us in, whose love abounds for us. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he I invite you to stand as you are able to join our hearts and our voices together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. At this time, we invite our communion servers forward um, to prepare to distribute communion. We'll invite you to come forward and receive uh, the bread here at the center, and then step into either side where there will be trays that have both wine and grape juice um, in little cups. The, the clear uh, liquid is the juice at the center of the tray. And then one step further to deposit your cups into the baskets that the kids will be holding. We also have gluten-free wafers available, and if you are in need of that, just tell those who have the bread. All are welcome to have this
I invite you to stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Giver of every good gift, Christ's body is our food and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Receive God's blessing and command. By your hands may love be shared. By your voice may peace be spoken. By your eyes may beauty be seen. By your ears may truth be heard. And by your life may the song of Christ be sung. Amen. Amen. As we sing our sending song, I invite the children of the church to meet me back at the baptismal font. <laughs>